Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to On the Mic with the M. And T. Uh, today, very simply, change is difficult, growth is difficult, mm-hmm. but both are necessary to become the person you are meant to be. Absolutely. We deal with a society as a whole that think that we're one pill away from being in the best shape of our lives, to looking as good as we should look in our lives, and to being the smartest, greatest person on earth. We know it's a joke. We know you have to put in the work. Real work, people. Not a filter. N- not a filter. Mm-hmm. Not a button. Mm-hmm. Not a swipe left, swipe like right. Mm-hmm. Not a proper angle. No, no, not not <laughs> not. Catch me on my catch me. Oh, get my leg up. Turn my head sideways. Does that get an angle? Yes. No. Get your ass, get your ass right. Get your ass in the gym. Get your ass somewhere to handle your business. See a therapist. Do something. But it's going to be hard for you. It's going to be difficult. Nothing worth getting is going to be easy. Yes. Uh-huh. And I, it, we say it all the time. Do better. Be better. But people think, oh, well, what does that, what does that really mean? Mm-hmm. That means... Look at your goddamn self for who you are right now. Ask yourself, am I happy where I am? It's just a simple question. Am I making enough money? Do I feel good? Do I, am I mentally in a space that I, I'm happy with? And if you said no, now you have to start making a plan. And all those things without really lying to yourself, right? Mm. Because like living paycheck to paycheck or living a rat race, that's not making enough money. And so if you say to yourself, because you don't feel like, um, putting in the extra work to maybe get a higher certification or making any changes to make more money, Mm -hmm. then you'll try to convince yourself that you make enough. But really, you know, you're late on your bills type of lifestyle or as soon as you get your money, it's all depleted. Mm -hmm. Like you have to honestly say to yourself, no, I'm not making enough money for Mm -hmm. my lifestyle so that then you can assess, you know, what all are what are you trying to afford? And maybe you can either cut out some things that you've been trying to afford so mm-hmm. that you can actually afford your lifestyle so that you actually are making enough money. Absolutely. Right? Or you could say, Well, how can I now earn more money? Because I'm just not happy and I need more. And but you can't you shouldn't lie to <laughs> yourself. You don't lie to yourself just so that you don't have to change. People lie to themselves because it's easier. It's, know, it's easier, easier so that you can stay right where you're at. Absolutely. Right? Like, oh, no, I'm happy in my relationship. So that way I don't have to rattle anybody's feathers. Because if I say, hey, you know, I don't feel good in this space, that means that I make you upset, right? Because mm-hmm. now I'm forcing you to talk to me more. You know, you know, only too tired to talk anyway. And now I want to talk to you more. It's hard. Absolutely. So now I'm going to just pretend, and it's only going to be buff for so long, right? Before that thing that you don't want to work on to change could be your weight. Yes. It's only buff so long you can pretend that, you know, oh, no, my weight is just fine. You know, I'm super skinny for no reason. For It's just, it's just <laughs> fine. You don't think you need to eat more? You exactly. Don't th- or no, I'm, I'm super big, and that's just, you don't think you need to eat less at some point? It's a health risk. Living yes. Living on both extremes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know women on both on both ends. And, and I know men on both ends. Yeah. So we both know it. But the, the, the thing that amazes me is like whenever you talk to someone who wants to lose some weight. Mm-hmm. And you say, well, don't you want to try walking? You know, those people have all kinds of fucking excuses. You know what? I get home so late. I can't even walk around the neighborhood. Yeah, it's a weird concept. But you don't <laughs> yeah. even have time for yourself to like live. You don't have time <laughs> for yourself to be better. And it live healthy. Yeah. But yeah, you'll fuck around and stop by McDonald's because, you, oh, you know, it's too oh, late. No, you had time eat. for that. Yeah. And then the line wrapped around the building. <laughs> oh, and don't, Chick-fil-A? Yeah. Oh, Chick-fil-A is wrapped around a couple buildings. Yeah, but they get you in and out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I don't That's care true. how long that line is. Shh, it's sort of true. like Chipotle. I don't even know how they, how they do this. The line could be to the door at Chipotle. They get you in and out. Wow. They sure do. And they most certainly do. Yeah. But you find time for that. No, you do. But Because I'm going to just, you know, 
I could be staying. I could be walking and <laughs> I could be walking. And I could walk walk around in the mall mm -hmm. and then say, you know what, let me just leave, walk around the mall and then come back and go and do this. But you don't want to. Yes. Because again, it's like maybe if I could take a pill or drink a drink and do all that. Maybe maybe when it gets warm, because now we're springtime, you're like, Oh, it's, it's spring now. Because three months ago, you know what? Whew, it's it's winter time. It's too cold out there. Too cold outside. Y'all forget we used to go outside in the cold. Yeah, exactly. All the time. You had to yeah. drag us from outside to bring yeah. us inside. Now you can't get a motherfucker. You even stay out there after five o'clock. Oh, it's dark. Oh, cold. Yeah, I, I and go you inside. can't go outside when it's dark. Oh, nope, mm -mm, <laughs> nope, fuck that. No, no, no. It's dark and cold. So I'm bring my happy ass inside. <laughs> like what happened? So you can't go for a jog at six o'clock anymore. Okay. No. So it's dark and cold. Mm -mm, can't no. at all. But now it's springtime. Mm -hmm. And them same motherfuckers who three months ago, I got all the time in the world. Cause spring ain't gonna come till April. Mm -hmm. It's only like this November. It's April here now. Mm -hmm. And now you your fat ass running around talking about let me put this coat. Oh god damn, I guess I gain a little weight. Mm -hmm. But your but your shirt has got a bunch of my, open miles in it. Straight down. Wow. Button, open. Open. Mouth. Button, open. open mouth. Button open mouth. <laughs> open. <laughs> <laughs> and then your goofy fat ass talking about I got mm, I, I gotta give me a bigger shirt. No, why don't you go ahead and start walking? Because if you get a bigger shirt, that means there's more room to put in that shirt. Mm -hmm. And then eventually next year, you'd be saying the same shit. Next year, you're 20, 40, 50, 60, 100 pounds overweight. And it's not to say be a slave to your size, no. right? Because you can always buy a proper fitting shirt. Yes. But if the idea is to live healthy and, you know, in return, you said that you wanted to lose weight in order to, you know, live healthy, mm -hmm. you got to actually do it. Got to. And that's, that's just what it boils down to. Even like the the very idea of being a man, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Last time y'all been to the doctors ten years ago, and I know I don't know about you personally. <laughs> I mean y'all in general. But and you know what? You know you you're absolutely correct. As a man, unless our damn fingers fall off yeah. or something fall off yeah. or something bleeding, yeah, we ain't gonna go. You don't. Show, I mean, you don't even show up for a general base. I, I call it a baseline visit. Right. That's true. So you can can we at least get your height and weight? Check your little blood. <laughs> make sure do you still even have blood? Like, are you still there? That is so. So that when true. your pinky about to fall off, we can at least call the doctor who can meet us somewhere oh, who shit. at least saw you. I mean, just once That's a year. True. That's true. I feel like y'all should do it like how you know our OBGYNs want us to do our Pap smears like around our birthdays. We should once a year. Yeah, we birthday. should. <laughs> <laughs> just, just get something checked out. And now you look at guys when you get to a certain, especially if you're African American, you gotta get the prostate checked. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you say you should get it at forty, right? Because we get prostate cancer relatively quick and so advanced and so devastating that by the time you find out, it's too late. Yes. Like me, I don't want about get stuck stuck no finger in my ass. <laughs> that's why y'all ain't going. Cost. My yeah, bad. That's know, why y'all. Yeah, but you it's, know. that's the test, though. Yeah, that's the test. Yeah, that's the test. So that's the forty and after visit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, now know. listen. Yeah, all the things that's been stuck inside of us. <laughs> nah, y'all gotta take the L. Y'all gotta <laughs> take the L. Do y'all not? Know? So first of all, what we showing up? Every year, every other year now for Paps, because you know they changed it, mm -hmm. right? You know how the men get when they start mm -hmm. changing policy. No, yes. it was every other year now. Yes, right? yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, no, do you know how do we get the, what is it, the speculum all up and cranking you over? Crank, oh. And it's still the same tool from, I don't know what year they invented this little duckbill looking thing. You would it's, think you would do something a little better than that? I, you would think. After all these years? Yeah, I mean, nah. So I don't know what y'all got going on in y'all's office when y'all go. But you take one for the team is what I'm saying. Gary, let me tell you. Let yeah, me, let, do let me better. Let me tell y'all some, some good for shit for, for men. What we do, what we really do, you you think it's like, oh, my God, he going to go ahead. She going to stick her whole fist up your, up your rectum. And it really isn't. It really is. You kind of lay sideways. You know, they get your nice little phone position and they just tell you you know you're gonna feel something and he lube up a little finger wow and, and he just going searching but they'll tell you like okay we're gonna let you know they're searching searching yeah they they, they they go in and they try to feel where your where your um prostate is yeah it's to push on it exactly a lot applying pressure on it and just kind of say okay I, I it's it's not large not you know it's normal oh okay and then they do a test they do uh it's called a psa test where mm -hmm. they just 
test the number of uh, some sort of um, level of your blood to see if it's over a certain level, then yeah. that means you're susceptible to prostate cancer. If it's under a certain level, you're good. But those two things they do. Um, when I first had it done, it was like, what the fuck? I felt I felt vulnerable. I, I like I, I needed a dinner, or I needed her to give me some roses. Wow, well, he wanted a cigarette <laughs> when they was done. Kiss me on the forehead, and say it'd be okay. <laughs> it, you know, you feel a certain way. Like, what the fuck? And you're like, okay. And then especially when you, you, you go around the front and test your little uh-huh, your, your okay. boys, okay. and then you test them, and you, and that's all. Men, check your balls because if you don't check your balls, you end up with testicular cancer, mm-hmm. and that takes you out early. And strangely enough. They get that early. Testicular cancer. Uh, Lance Armstrong, the cyclist, had yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, that's that was the cancer he had. That's okay. the cancer he had, and it's like, and it's a ball. And they said if you do feel something, get it tested because if you have any nodules or bumps on your testicles, that you could should get it checked because it may be cancerous. Mm-hmm. So you want to check that. But these are things nobody want to have a conversation about. Yeah. Because again, it's it's, it's saying that oh my god, I got to be responsible. I got I got to make sure I check my health. But what I got to show up regularly for myself. You have That's to. That's what it's saying. Yeah. You have to. And you make all the reasons not to show up for yourself. And and f- as men, we fail miserably. But we're the ones that die early. You know, men die earlier yeah. than men than women yeah. because men, for the most part, you know, we we'll, ah, that hurt a little bit. We all right, but we don't, we don't want to deal with doctors. You know, and case history based on you know, African Americans in this country, mm-hmm. you have a right to feel like, oh, I can't trust doctors, but mm-hmm. we're better now. But we need to get those things checked. So. Take the time and, and, and get these things checked. Get your prostate checked. Get your, your rectum checked. Get all that shit checked because that shit can come back and haunt you or it could kill you. Yeah. And now you leave your wife, your girlfriend, your kids' ass out all because I don't want. I wish you could take a pill. Can't take because a pill. Because today everybody knows somebody who's died from cancer. You sure do. You don't know somebody who died from pandemic. No. But you do know people who's died from cancer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it happens every day, all the time. Yeah. So you have to take the time to really look at yourself and, and do the work necessary to get shit done. I'm going to use myself as an, exa- as okay. an example. I'm a type 2 diabetic and been almost a diabetic for almost 30 years. Um, was on insulin up until probably the past six months. They always say once you're on insulin, you never get off. Okay. Never. And my doctor was like, you know, she said, well, you know, you've been a diabetic. I'm giving you all these pills. And, you know, she, and she, so many words. She said, well, if we keep going this way. We may have to end up putting you, putting a uh, pump in you, an mm-hmm. insulin pump. And I'm sitting in there and I'm saying this is myself, back when it was first diagnosed 30 years ago. No. Oh, no. This no, 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 no. Day. This is recently. Let me tell you, about 18 months ago. I was taking all kinds of medications, was taking insulin shots for about the past, what, four years, three, four years, taking shots every day because it was out of control. And the doctor told me, she said, at this point, you know, you've done all you can do and we may be looking at getting you a pump and doing some other things. So in my head, I said, wait a minute, either I can accept that, it's okay, you know, I can't do no better, so I'm just going to get the pump and then that's another thing I have to get done or I need to make a change I need to make such a drastic change that I'm gonna throw everything I'm putting all my eggs in one basket I'm changing I'm doing a 180 I'm changing everything how I eat how I work out what I do how mentally how I deal with things and let me see what the hell happens I have nothing to lose right now all I could see was be on an insulin machine and getting one implanted and that was gonna be my new life just walk around with a, a insulin pump right and I said, fuck this. I went to the gym, and I just started. I said, I'm just going to start walking. When I first day I started walking, it was during the pandemic. It was uh, probably three years ago. It was like March 2020. And I said, I'm just going to start walking. T, can I tell you when I started walking, I did a half a mile and was out of fucking breath. Absolutely. I was exhausted. Mm-hmm. I was out of fucking breath. I literally... Got off that thing, went to the bathroom, and tears just going to my eyes. I said, what, how the fuck did I allow myself to get to this point? Mm-hmm. But then you start thinking, life was important. Oh, I got to work. I got to work about the family. I got to do all this. 
but not, all the excuses, all the excuses, but not doing this and not changing how I eat, mm-hmm. how I drink things, and and, and everything. Not that taking a, the better care of the best care the, of yourself. The best care of myself, mm-hmm. and I just I went home. I sit there and I said, "This is going to be a journey. This is going to be a long, hard journey." But I also knew if I didn't do it. I knew where I was going to be. Because the other journey you were about to walk down was also going to be long and hard also. Absolutely. So it wasn't (laughs) like, you know, you was (laughs) opting one, you know, hard for one that was easy. No. They're both going to be hard journeys either way. You slice the pie. Absolutely. And then I went to my eye doctor and I told her what was going on. She said, you need to do everything you need to do to get get yourself straight because diabetes is going to start affecting your sight. Mm-hmm. My eyes is my money maker. I mm-hmm. can't fuck with my eyes. That, that's how I get paid. That's how I do what I do. So I said, okay, I really got to get into this. I don't care how the image of I go and do a half a mile and I'm breathing hard and I feel like some shit. That's nothing. I could be still breathing hard, not being able to see and walking around with a goddamn insulin pump. Very Absolutely. Easily. Yeah. So yeah. I said, Fuck that. So I start. I changed everything. I cut out pro, different proteins, cut out sweets, cut out drinking sodas, cut out all that shit. And then I went from a 12. And if you guys know what an A1C of 12 is, you know that shit is bad. And for people who don't know, what it should be is between 5 and 6%, not 12. 12 is way up there i went from that to probably i'm gonna say about six months ago down to six Mm -hmm. and lost about 85 90 pounds roughly doing six miles to warm up just to warm up before i start lifting weights and pounding weights and and constantly do it for hour and a half in the gym yeah five days a week yep was it hard? Fucking right, it was hard. Was it, is it hard walking by things you used to love to eat and now you say, I can't eat no more? Because is that cheesecake worth your sight? Mm-hmm. Is them ribs worth your sight? Mm-hmm. Or your toes? That's right. Or your kidneys? Or your heart? So you start saying, you put in perspective, food ain't shit. Food's supposed to be a medicine. Mm-hmm. Food shouldn't be something that's killing Food's us. Food's supposed to nourish the body. Exactly, uh-huh. not kill the body. That's right. And by doing that, it, it put my head in a, in a totally different space, saying, if I really want things, I can do it. In fact, my doctor was like, I've never seen this happen. She said, I've been doing diabetics forever. I've never seen a diabetic. By the way, I'm off of insulin. Mm, congrats. Thank you. After years of being on insulin, and a lot of people say, your pancreas just shut down because you have the insulin coming in, it stops producing. So you'll be, you'll be on it forever. Mm-hmm. I got off of it. Mm-hmm. She's like, I, I stood in her office and we looked at each other. She looked, she said, I had to look at your test twice. Like, how the hell does this dude go from a 12 down to a six in 18 months? How did you do it? I said, when you told me I had to get it done, I had to pull that difference. I always say I'm different. Mm-hmm. I had to pull that. Here's the reason why I'm different. I'm going to do this shit and not complain about it. Just quietly do what I need to do. That told me anyone can do what they want to do if you put your mind to it and understand it's not a, it's not a, a quick process. It's not a, a, a pill. It's not a drink. It's not a shot. Mm-hmm. It's you have to put in the work in order to be the best you can be. Yeah, it's a journey. And the journey itself is the part that you enjoy. Absolutely. When you're young and they tell you that, you're like... Oh. <laughs> I don't know why you're trying to hear this. You know, I'm yes. just trying to get to exactly where I need to be at, and I just want to be arrived, right? But that's who you. It's great that you know you're not on insulin anymore. But what about the time that you spent, you know, hammering those weights in the gym? Like that was the, you know, those were the great small wins in there, right? Those Absolutely. were the defeats, and the wins only feel great if you felt that defeat once or twice before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly, because at that point, you're like, I can do it. Yeah. Because you went from, I can't do anything, yeah. to I can do it. Yeah, you went from all the way down there to like, oh, man, 
I just, ele- is that a self elevation? Yes. Self. I've arrived. It's something Girl. that no one else can take from you because no. no one else gave it to you. No. Uh-huh. That's what I'm, and that's what I try to tell people is like, understand the greatest success is overcoming your own fear and overcoming you. Yep. Overcoming your thought of saying, you can't do it. Mm-hmm. You've been you doing holding it. yourself back. You're holding yourself mm-hmm. back. Boy, you've been this way for 30 years. Ain't no way in hell that, because I had the little man that said it, mm-hmm. you're a fool. There's no way in hell you're going to get off this shit. Because first of all, no diabetic gets off this shit. Well, if you don't do anything different than what you had been doing, then you're not going to. <laughs> what like... did you just said? You have to do something different yes. in order to accomplish what you yes. need to accomplish. You can't keep doing the same stupid Mm-mm. shit. As people say, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Yep. It yep. doesn't happen. It that doesn't way. make sense. It's it, not a plausible thing. Like, I'm going to keep eating the same foods in the same quantity at the same hour of the, throughout the day, and I want to look different. Or I want it to make me feel different. Because food also makes us feel a certain type of way. Absolutely. And and sometimes people use food to make them feel better. Mm-hmm. I.e., if somebody's in a bad relationship, yeah, that I want becomes some ice cream. <laughs> I'm just saying, if <laughs> yeah, somebody hurts true. my feelings and I, you know, I'm sitting at home and let's just have some ice cream, it makes you feel good. <laughs> I think the thing that you guys are both saying, which is really important, is finding a positive uh, <clears throat> way of finding joy. Italian ice, he's the... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like, okay, cool. You want ice cream, but like, actually, no cap, though. Mm-hmm. Like, even if you want ice cream, getting an Italian ice would still be a better option. Mm-hmm. And not as much. Right? Exactly. Because sometimes you kind of like, okay, it's, it's only half the container left. You know, I'm going to just take the half of the container. For, you know, you don't yep. think you, I'm, I'm going to just eat some of it. But exactly. somehow, you, hey, all of the, oh, I didn't even mean to do that. Yeah, because you took too much from the beginning, so you set yourself up for failure. Absolutely. Yeah, so making proper choices up front. And that goes with everything. Mm-hmm. We're using food and diabetes and all that stuff, but that goes with just general health. Yeah. Just general how mentally, if somehow you know you're in a miserable-ass relationship, know you're miserable. Like, if you give it, like, fuck, I'm still with this motherfucker. I can't, I can't. I don't know what to do to get out of this situation. Mm-hmm. You do, but you don't want to do the work it takes to get out of it. Yeah, or you keep saying, I'm just not happy. Well, you don't want the insecurity that comes with the decision to make that. So, to make that decision, rather. So, if you're in a shitty relationship and you don't want to be a part of it anymore, mm-hmm. what you fail to realize is that that also comes with upending your life because you could be in the same household with the person you can't stand be sharing bills with the person you can't stand mm-hmm. y'all could have that together mm-hmm. yep. there's so many things that could that come along with that idea and people get afraid because the, the instability that comes with it but to realize that instability is temporary yep. it doesn't have to be permanent mm-hmm. you can also, be unstable and then get back to where you want to go but also sometimes when you sign up the situations like that you've overextended something you yep. like you got to do the work. Pay attention. Oh, I'm trying to get away from this guy. I don't want to be here anymore. What, what? Let me start paying off these credit cards because you know that the that's a bill for you, mm-hmm. your credit card bill. So you need to bring that back down. Absolutely. Yeah, you have to position yourself in a way to where you're winning. Winning, but mm-hmm. these people put themselves in a situation where, and I call playhouse, where you get into a relationship and then all of a sudden you want to do everything but to make it official. You want to get a house in their name or, or get an apartment in their name. Then you want to get furniture. You want to get all these things because you're playing the And then role. you get a baby. And then you get a okay. baby. And now all of a sudden, no, you're we, like. No, oh. we ain't playing no more. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> no, we done made this whole house. Well, see. No. But see. Hold well, on, I'm waiting for you to propose to me. It but, should be coming right now. But T. No. You're the one that allowed it to happen. Though. No, damn uh, that. You better get up on that knee, listen, baby. You better get listen. down on that <laughs> <laughs> you better get would down it? on but, that. Be careful what you're talking about. Why? Why was it? Why, I why this, would I have baby. to? I done Listen, washed these dishes. I told you had these damn babies. Made your lunch. Uh-uh. Hey, you didn't ask me no. no. Listen, listen. It's when time. we got to hooked up together, you it's said time. nothing about I had to make you uh, <laughs> make you an honest woman. Wow. No, I did. I did. I ain't here. 
Nah, I ain't here. I just nah. heard you gonna take uh-uh. care of me and, and uh, we're good to go. But I would never let it go this far. <laughs> wow, y'all already got me messed up. Y'all already See? got me messed. I'd have been online. Nah, I'd have sent that. I'm gonna be rude and say some real disrespectful Come shit. On. I'm you sorry. Doing hey, I just wanna let y'all know that's the producer. <laughs> You know, if you come with some shit, come on, producer. You do, you're going to come with that shit from the spot. I didn't say anything disrespectful yet. I haven't said anything wrong yet. Y'all, uh, people, y'all heard what I said. All I said is I might say something that might be a little disrespectful. Well, it might. Oh, it oh. might be. I don't know. Okay. My opinion is you get what you ask for. What I mean by that, you want to be married. You want to have... Uh, a nice house with this man, but you have never set any boundaries or any levels of expectation, and then you get hoed. That's your fault. <gasps> you cannot I know, go I... to a house with a guy. No, <laughs> we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk some shit. We're we'll gonna talk some shit today. I'm sorry, y'all. We're ah, shooting a lot of rounds today. Face. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah the face, see, you can't see the face. Today. We should be live rounds 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 today. I know a friend of mine who moved to another state with a girl he had no intentions of getting married to. So why he do that? Left a great paying job to do so. To make. Exactly. Oh, I don't know. One fourth of what he used to make. I mean, just itch. Like, Move to a whole nother state. Yes. Not didn't want to get married. Uh, was confronted by said girl while they were in new state, saying, "Hey, we're in this new state. I know your infrastructure shot to shit, but I'm trying to get married." Well. Y'all moved. So the infrastructure you had when you got together mm-hmm. no longer exists. So now you two are no longer together. She's back home with her parents and you're stuck in another state. My G, I love you. And I know you'll probably hear this one day. And if you do, we can talk about it if you feel some type of way, but you made a bad call. Made a bad decision. I don't understand the decision. It there wasn't because you didn't think it through. Oh, okay. You didn't okay. think it through. The problem Neither was one of them did. nobody did. No, no one. Th- <laughs> nobody. No, nobody. That's the problem. Nobody thought. Nobody. Nobody was thinking. No, no. But that's the problem. Is that a lot of people nowadays move without thinking. Uh huh. You just you on just both do it teams. Feels you good. Did, you guys the perfect good. analogy on both teams are losing. Yes. Both teams oh, are wow. bad. Like yes. that's that's a te- y'all team worked. <laughs> a, we both found a way to work together to fuck each other up. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's you work together true. to ruin your futures. Absolutely. As a they say, be careful who you choose as your mate. It will make or break your life. But and you know the other well, goddamn honest, thing. I don't know what happened with it, him. It, oh, boy. It, it's crazy because that goes back to lack of communication. That goes back to real no, communication, no. not that fluff shit. Like, no, oh, you know even what, if we he would have communicated this? that to me. She would have still dragged his ass down there with the quarter <laughs> amount of the job. Yeah. Right so, but the problem to me is so a man can't communicate him stepping down from, you know, his throne in order to follow me and my shenanigans. Like, that's not an alpha move. No. And if I'm just like, oh, okay with that, that means I'm looking for a beta man that I can probably control because there's probably some sense of insecurity or doubt going on in my world to where I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to be okay with taking, unless you're young and dumb, you know, and you don't quite understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. But by the time we're talking about you make X amount and then we quarter that out, you're not that young anymore. Right, no. because you're not making minimum wage, and then saying you moved out into another state and you making one fourth for them. No, you was making enough money to where you was old enough to know a little bit something yes. better than what we doing. Yes. So even if we communicating about, even if it's bullshit, mm-hmm. communicating about bullshit. It still comes out to be bullshit. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and, and, but, and the other thing is this. People have a tendency to think they know every fucking thing. They have to think, yeah. you know what? Yes, such and such done that, but I'm smarter than that. Do you know how many motherfucking grades are full of people who are smarter than somebody, but obviously that's why they're in the grade because they're not as smart as they thought they were? Yeah. 
when you get to a point where something sounds crazy to you, you just sit back. You say, whoa, 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 let me step back. Hmm. Why am I doing How is it going to benefit me? Mm -hmm. In fact, how is it going to benefit us if I do this? And trust yourself. Like, there's no way on God's green earth, if I took anybody who's listening to this podcast right now, even y'all or myself, anybody, if I tell you, look at your bank account, cut that shit into a fourth, you're going to go to a whole nother state on top of that. Nobody, and I mean nobody, would say yes to that. No. Nobody. Nobody, nobody. nobody would say no to that. Nobody would say yes. I, I, I don't even no, need to give you any more background. Yeah. I don't have to say like, oh, well, you know, your mom. Like, mm-hmm. it could be good things, bad things. No one's gonna because say because the pay. cost of living in no state got cut by a quarter. <laughs> exactly. No state got cut by a quarter. No state no. got cut by that amount. No. Money. And then for the, I don't. I, I'm gonna just say it for it to be the man's income to have been gotten cut. Like it's it's I don't want to say it's okay for the woman's income to have gotten cut, but we all know that it is. I, I mean, but that's <laughs> we but all know that's, that it is. Like that's that's I, just I, the way yeah. to, to happen. Yeah. Let's just be honest here. Yeah. You yeah. know if. If it was like, babe, you know, I got this great job where my income is, you know, totally inflated, and perhaps your your income deflate, mm-hmm. like, you know, we ain't even gonna work no more. Let's just keep it real. We just yeah, just, exactly. a quarter. No, I'm gonna just quit and just there you, you know, go. They take care of the house. I don't know. This, yes, at this rate, you probably pay somebody to do that too. But whatever, a quarter. Yes. No, mm-mm. ain't no state that cheap to live in to where you can quarter your income and, and be hope okay. I, hope I can wing it. Yeah, you can't no. wing it at that point. And, and, and don't th- wing it at certain ages. Oh no, yeah. there's, there's, there's a cutoff point for winging. It. Yeah, it's called twenty and under. <laughs> yes, because yeah, because yeah, at that point you can come home. You're always yeah. home. You're like, oh, I, you know, I can work this job. I get an extra f- few cents at this job. Yeah. You can do that. And people have pity on you. Yes, because they will. And you because you can't buy alcohol technically, so you're still silly and dumb. Absolutely. Right? But by the time you can legally buy alcohol, oh no, you had too much training at this. I don't a know if lot. I remember telling you about the one kid who showed up to the shop and um, he was 21. And, you know, I had to ask him his age. And he was basically like, he needed somebody to like cash app him money because he needed virtual dollars at this point and he only had cash money on him. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? He said, I'm trying to get back home. I'm not from out here, from Glen Burnie. He said, yeah, I'm just trying to get somebody $7, see if they can cash app it to me so I can catch me an Uber. I said, what is happening? What the hell? Well, long story short, he done stumbled across because he was had. It must have been engaged in relations with the young lady who came and picked him up. Oh, 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 she can't pick him up. She can't pick him up. <sighs> he must not have did it right. Oh. So now he got to find his own ride <laughs> oh, home. God damn. You she know? Got, he got kicked out the car? I mean, out the house probably. Oh, the hotel, you know, I don't know. He to the hotel too, but yeah, no, uh-uh. He didn't know what he was doing, so he, but what I'm saying is he was ill-prepared for life. <sighs> Yeah, that was. <laughs> damn. If your game was that weak, you should have been prepared. Play. You should bought hundred dollars with you if you knew, if you weren't. <laughs> but he was twenty one, and so for that reason, I was like, you gotta go out and figure out your way. But if he was under twenty one, we might have gave some pity, give me the seven dollars, and you know, pray it's not a scam type of thing. But because you owe, you know, you know, you should know better by now. Yes. $7. But you know, it's also a shame though. <laughs> if true. I sat here and said that same story to you, flip that guy for a girl, you would have helped her. Yeah, she could have been 42. You would have been <laughs> 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 See? See? <laughs> you, know, you want a man to lead, then you make him lead. I don't know what y'all want me to say. I've been said we don't, we're not equal. We not doing the same stuff. I'll be the first one. I'm not, no, we not, ain't no feminist kick. No. Uh-uh. Oh, but, but you Lady know what? Lady could have been walking down the side of the, the sidewalk. Can you buy me a cup of coffee? Sure. She don't even need to look homeless. And you know what's so funny? We're laughing, but that's a fucking true statement. If, uh, if a 21-year-old is. girl said, you know, I can't get home, I need some money. I said, all right, what you, I, I'll send him some money. But a motherfucking dude came to me and said, and he had the money. He had the money in his pocket. That was real bad. Oh. Because the weird part to me is what lessons you done missed, bro. You don't know where you can add the cash app to your card. You didn't want to do that before. I mean, you're talking about you came out to get some tail. Oh, you got to be prepared, my man. Yeah, yeah. Then that's that. That was my, see, you didn't come out to like do a job or a gig and something messed you up. You came out to have a good time. And when you want to have a good time, you got to be prepared. Yes. As a young lady like 
you got to be prepared too if we're going to have so much more pity on you. Because I'm sorry, I ain't nobody trying to take y'all like they trying to take. Come on, man. Y'all, come on, y'all. Y'all know it's not it's not the same out here. The girls no. just can't be out here with the short skirts, you know, passed out on the sidewalk because they didn't have too much to drink. Come on, y'all's yeah. vultures out here. Yeah, we 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 heard uh police we heard them stupid ass stories where chick passed out by, passed out by the trash can, dude runs by like Ezel and said, hmm, she drunk, she passed out. <laughs> Oh well, let me, let me partake of her, and then she's like, "What the hell happened?" Oh, you know, you sleep. Oh, oh, you passed out. So I just thought I just stop by and take a little something from you, and then keep on moving. Wow, that was like a sketch. Yeah, that was Brock, that was yeah. Brock Turner. Yeah, motherfucker went to jail. Went to jail and saying, "Well, she was she was drunk. She was by what am I to do? She laid there drunk ass up. I'm a little horny. She passed out. Anybody gonna know? Raped her, and that motherfucker got months in jail, didn't he?" Months, because he, the judge said well, she should have been out there laid out, out there like that anyway. So she kind of bought on herself. Wow, mm -hmm. that's the rationale. Mm -hmm. She bought on herself because she was passed out. <laughs> this is the reason why I can't see women in that situation, and and I can't understand why women even put themselves in that situation. You're so fucked up that you that you just pass out somewhere. Well, it's not to me that so fucked up that you passed out somewhere. It's that you decided to, first of all, test, because I'm assuming you don't know your limit. These are young girls. But you decided to test your limit, like, by yourself. Mm. Or you showed up with a group of girls who you didn't leave the party with. And somehow you ended up laid out on a bush and a tree in a corner. What? What? In a lawn? No. No, because you have no self-preservation. No, because problem. your mother didn't teach you, probably. No, because, she because decided I mean, to show but there's natural human self-preservation. No, I've seen girls who will walk away from the group. Because y'all don't have self-preservation. That's what I'm saying. No, her mother Women didn't teach you stupid proper. shit all the time because they have zero self-preservation. But did your mother teach you self-preservation? You need to get taught self-preservation. Who <laughs> self-preservation? <laughs> you preserve your fucking self. Why do, I, why do you need to get taught no, how to somebody protect needs, yourself? You no, know, as a woman, you do get taught no, how to protect yourself. That's just common sense. Yes, you do get that's taught how to sense. protect yourself. But yes, you do. Why go outside? You I drink outside, your I'm not going to go see four people standing on the block and think, let me go see what these fine gentlemen are talking about. No, I'm going to get in my fucking car and go home. If I'm drunk, I'm not going to sit here and say, let me go wander into the fucking night just because it, it feels good, because the air feels great. But it didn't look like the night. Duh. It was a big star she was trying to get to. Okay, she so was she drunk. Go with God then. Go with God then. Whatever happens, happens. And when she fell, she thought it was the bed. Okay, that's so she felt like the concrete, oh and then and then her life was that was just it. Then I shouldn't feel sympathy for you because for some reason God you can't damn. figure out how to protect yourself. That's that's yeah, bad. I'm, I'm telling you that you, we have, we have classes for that. Yeah, uh, but it's called so, common sense. But it's not that. Yeah, but, but, but you know what? But you know what? He said it's your fault. That's your fault, then. Uh, producer, when, when you were going to college, college, how many women end up in certain parties, parties and you had to actually, actually walk them? What day? That's what, what I'm saying. And you weren't taught college. much. And it's 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 you weren't taught much. You weren't even being taught. That's just called common sense. You're a woman. You're a woman. That's that's. Protect yourself from the unknown. Okay. How do you know that? Okay. It's basic shit. It's basic Somebody, shit. Uh, could you imagine if a young lady of today's today's to life, mm -hmm. imagine if she went to college and never been exposed to social media. Mm -hmm. okay. What type of situation has her parents put her into? In terms of her going to school. Yeah, in terms of her being on a college campus and the first time she's using social media is now. If she, if she, makes, if she, she somehow she, makes it to college without using social media, mm -hmm. then she is baby out in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> she has, she <laughs> damn sure and is. And what I'm she saying to you is that it be some bambies out there. And that's cool. And how she baby. gonna protect but herself? You, but y'all oh, yeah. silly shit. <laughs> Like, it's not like baby who got caught in the trap. Baby tripped on a twig on the ground and passed the fuck out. Like, no. Man. Like, no, you yeah. can't do that. Yeah, that I can't have baby mother should have taught her about the twigs and the road. 
That's all I'm and, saying. And, and, and it's that, that, they're, the road, not, they're not pouring the proper woods. things into the children it can be to and properly I, protect yourself. And you have to learn from your mistakes. Like, bitch, if you drank too much last time and you passed out and you don't remember what happened after that, you maybe shouldn't do it again do this you, weekend. Do I'm you just know how many people, when I was going to college, these girls going in, they drinking in parties and they sipping and sipping. We know, especially any guy knows, you keep an eye. Now, if you like a back of a shoe, they ain't nobody gonna mess with you. Cause you like a back of a shoe, we're gonna let you pass out in the front of me, kick you in the corner and throw a blanket over you. So I trip over you and keep you moving. But if you're fine and you start walking around sipping and sipping and sipping, and also you get all giggly, everybody antennas up. Everybody watching you. Why? Cause we're gonna catch you. She, you slip. Cause first, Cause ain't nobody you're... taught her that she was the cream of the no! crop, and so she's moving in a room thinking that she's regular, and she's not. Nobody no, taught it her that. It does. Regular. Yeah, it does. Because, like he said, if a girl walk inside a room and she looking like a silverback, she can move different than a dime piece <laughs> walking in the fucking room. I'm sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> Keep it real. I, I, here's what I'm saying. Keep it you should real. never, you, you should you never get so drunk that you don't know where you are. No, you shouldn't. Especially if you are a woman. Period. Yeah. True period. That. True yeah. that. Now, what other people do to you, as you said, is depending on what you look like. If you look like a silver back, <laughs> no one's probably gonna touch you. No. I'm they not saying. No, I'm right. not. No, no, I'm not saying that she's not touchable. I'm not saying that. No, I'm yeah. saying that she, she, nah, somebody wants her. I'm just yep. saying that it takes more liquor for her. She can fight off men mm-hmm. more because she has more weight to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, technically, she's not desired to as many people. Mm-hmm. And so you're not having to fight off that many guys. Like, let's just keep it real. You can't. We can't all move in the room the same way. No. You no. just can't. No, because yeah. like if you make money, like let's say you're a millionaire, yes. you can't go out to, to Walmart and yeah. just be chilling. No. Like if you have a if like LeBron James goes out to anywhere, period, anywhere, yeah, he's gonna be harassed at front and center. Way, so we already know it's you. Yeah, yeah it's, it's different. You. You're right. There is there is a difference it's between just, money, difference between it looks. Is, yeah, because it's not just the looks. It nope. it's everything. There's there's always something that defines us. And creates and, and maintains that thing that we call its levels to this mm-hmm. thing, right? Yep. And we all have to be mindful where are we sitting at of the world of academia. Yes. And then you walk inside a room, if you're the professor or the student, it's levels to this. We know in school, <laughs> right? like, that, that's very true. Because you know in school, you as a professor, and some professors are, relative, are younger than, you know, than probably around the, roughly around the same age within a 10 year difference of the kids that they're teaching. Okay. So, if you're a teacher and you see a fine student, mm-hmm. you probably say, "You know what? She's off limits." But as we know, there's a lot of them don't give a shit. They're yeah. like, "You know what? She I'm gonna mess with her." You as a, as a young lady should understand the game. Or somebody should have told you it's a possibility that the game could go no, Sideways no, no so I'm saying people, some of these women, girls have not been taught. You're not been taught. You're not been groomed. Somebody say it to you once. And you might have seen it or heard it in the song, but you don't quite understand what it means when a guy who's, you know, 24 and every time he, he see you, he trying to talk to you, the 16 year old, you mm-hmm. think it's cute, mm-hmm. but you don't have a clue. Why a guy who's 24 got his own car? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. He's the man. Mm-hmm. Why he on your line? Exactly. So now you go to college and you think you the hot shit because you done pulled the 24 year old, you know, back two years ago and was all up in his. Until so you realized right? that was fucking weird when you got to college. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. no, no, no. You still ain't realize it because now you okay with playing with the professor. Oh, now you're that's about what to you enter that world. Yep. With, right? Yeah. Because yeah. they have because no problem. Because you have not figured out the boundaries and you also have not understood how you're being used and manipulated uh-huh. in any of these. A situation. Exactly. You think you out here on the come up. <laughs> Professor don't give a shit about what you, no. Ain't no come up here. None. It's just a good time. And you're gonna find it out the hard way. The hard way, because nobody told you. Nobody taught you your self worth. Nobody told you what level you should be on. Nobody taught you how to move. And, and then you go ha- 
to preserve your southeast you they don't know they don't you are know a sheep among wolves and you're sitting there thinking oh he's not really a, a wolf I, I, no he, they he are they're really thinking that like he can't possibly be a wolf look at him he's so cute look at his little baby ears on the back they all curly oh my goodness he called me last night bitch did you know he said good morning mm-hmm. <laughs> he was all good morning mm. i was like what <laughs> okay. he can't possibly be a wolf mm. and then you'll find out this is a lot of women as we talk today a lot of young women who are currently in college or going to be going to college mm-hmm. who may li- listen to this and say oh that can't be me yeah, no, no for real because attention and you you don't even realize the lack thereof mm-hmm. or the lack of the need mm-hmm. until you get it and it don't it's not there anymore and then yep. it comes back around and now you like a fiend oh. what they say love is like a drug yeah yeah. So you you start playing with that thing called attention for a girl for the first time who's not been interacting with guys, mm-hmm. who's not been allowed to have a cell phone, who's perhaps has mm. a cell phone that's been monitored or has been forced to, you know, um, stay away from guys on certain levels, mm-hmm. right? Whereas the rest of the world, 90% of the, the your peers are commingling, you know, making yep. up, breaking up. They got that little bit of resistance, right? They understand mm-hmm. that game. And then you jump in and you super green. Oh. And you know what happens to you with that? What's that walk call, producer? When you woke up in the morning, you look out the window, you see him walk across the campus. I oh. <laughs> would call it something different, but we like to call it the walk of shame. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the beautiful first thing. It's about 6.45 at a.m. Uh, I get a chance to wake up and look over the quad and see girls traversing to their bedrooms uh, because they were not where they were, were not at home. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, I hear you. I hear you. I hear everything in what you're saying. I, I, truly, I truly do. Ladies, I understand it's hard. I hear for y'all. I and, and, and please, don't, please don't understand my, my hostility for not understanding that women have to move differently. But it's because I understand women have to move differently. I get so frustrated. I think it's because there's too many women who move like bobbleheads. Yeah, like you mentioned. I think and that's the problem to me because in this day and age, with all the technology that we have, with all the ways we can learn about how people move, the fact that it is not 1964, mm. not 1984, mm-hmm. it's 2023. Y'all still moving like y'all bobbleheads? Like it's impor- it's improbable to me. I think you're you referencing the accountability of today's woman and how she moves. Mm-hmm. And that perhaps you moving with so much ignorance in the way that you're moving. Mm-hmm. It's yes. like you're not holding yourself accountable. And you're not growing from it. <laughs> yeah, you're straight you, up. You're not growing. I think that's fair to say. They're I not. think that's, and I think it's more than just the woman and how she moves. There's so many things that today everybody's dumbed down on that we just like, oh, I don't know. Where's a whole smartphone in your hand? And you um, don't have no intentions on looking up and seeking out any information for yourself. You don't, uh, you, like, that's just the simple thing of you're 16, 17. Because mm-hmm. I went to school with a girl who was 16 dating a guy who was 24. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you don't seem, to, this was when I was 16. Yeah. I'm 28 now, so that's 12 years ago. 12 years ago, I was like, you don't, you don't see how this is weird? She was like, no, nah, like, he likes me, whatever. When yeah. I saw her, we were 18, 19, 19. So it had to be, yeah, two years deep in the college. I saw her again during the summer. I said, oh, you still with such and such? Nah, we broke up because, like, I realized that, like, I've been with him for a long time, and, and I need to grow, so I was like, we need to break up. Um, but then I started thinking, like, the age gap was kind of weird. I was like, huh. I said, I guess now you understand why I said 12, like three years ago. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Like 24? Like, think about how old 24 It's like, is he an underachiever? Underachiever? Like. He got deep damn near slow. At that point, at 24, they know <laughs> three, the 16 year old. Like, what is a 16? Like, I can't even, I know 16 year old people. I know 16 year old people. I game with them all the time. And every time they open their mouth, I think, God, y'all think it's a dog. Mm. Yes, that's what I think. Mm. And guys and girls, mm-hmm. I game with both. And I'm like, gaming versus hanging out on a regular everyday basis, two different things. I understand that. But if I game with you and think like, 
you make bad decisions right now mm -hmm. and we're doing something that's inconsequential. I can't imagine being 24 thinking, man, this 16 year old, I got to have, she's got to be my girl. No. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 <laughs> no. You're not really making her your girl. Y'all just having a good time. If she thinks that. They were together for three years. That's your girl. <laughs> Yeah, no, hold on. <laughs> that's what we're doing. You got three years, that's your girl. <laughs> like, God damn. Y'all three years. I thought she it was. She was 15. I thought dude. it was one of those situations no. where. <laughs> no. I'm going to just say the words. I'm just saying the words. No. 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 So and that's why I'm like, there, there's no instance. When I was 21 and I met, there was a guy at my party who was 27. Mm-hmm. He was talking to this girl who was 17. I was like, bro, you understand she's 17. He was 27. Didn't realize she was 17. Yeah. Because I knew her, he didn't. Right. I knew them both. Uh -huh. I was like, bro, you don't want to talk to her. Like, oh, she seems real interesting. She has a good idea. Hmm. She's 17. Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I'm telling you she's 17. What you do with that information is on you. I'm telling you she's 17. Mm -hmm. Never talked to her again. Walked up out her face mid-sentence and just kept, kept it pushing. I'm like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Because you're 10 years older than her. That's, that's bad. So then that leads you to believe that if you're entertaining this age bracket, they've weeded you out in your age bracket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they yes. said, no, we don't want this one. <laughs> this yes. one's no good. <laughs> Think about that. The, yeah. This that's one's, bad. This one's got to be no good. He's got to go down. But He's you know what? Go his, other, his only other critique I will say, though. Mm-hmm. 27, right? Mm -hmm. I'm 28. So at 28, I'm not even thinking about children, right? Whereas a lot having of women children. having children. Okay. Yes. Not even considering it. It's weird. Exactly. It's, yeah. It would be, you would consider that weird at 30, 38 because when yeah. you were 28, you're like, no, like, what? Yeah. When you were 28, you already had me or we're about, right. we're about to have yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. You about so, to be here. Right. So that's a weird concept, y'all. But I'm looking at it as like, oh, uh, divorce rates, 50%. I'm looking at like, okay, well, if I'm gonna raise my kid, I'm looking at how financial, how money moves nowadays compared to where it used to move. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, financially, uh, uh, logistically, it makes no sense. So no, I'm not even considering having children. Mm -hmm. But every girl who be my age are like, hey, I'm almost 30, I'm not pregnant. We talking. Yeah, nobody trying to be pregnant trying. or like older? Exactly. Like, what? So, trying to so as I'm, I'm, so, I'm saying, <laughs> I ain't even lost it yet. Yeah. I'm sitting here thinking like, no, like I, what the fuck, like no, yeah. like I'm trying to have trying to make okay, kids by now. Me. I'm offended personally. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I tell you, yeah. but that's what, so. Then here's the question: as somebody who's my age, I have to think if I'm gonna date, I can't date somebody my age. If my thinking is I don't want children, unless I find a girl who also doesn't want to have kids. Okay. Right? What That's the only what? option. What are y'all talking about? No kids? Yeah. Because it's different. Kids are expensive. Yep. It's a different what vibe. Now. Financially, financially, children. Huh, they ain't really? cost me that much. They cost my mother a lot of money, Diane. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. I was like, okay. really? Okay. The woman with three children. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful children. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, please. Please. Yes. 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 So if you think about like, oh, what kind of lifestyle do I want to give my child? Even if you like, I want to give my kid the bare minimum, let me go to public school. I ain't doing no extracurricular, nothing. That shit's still expensive. Because hmm. you still got clothes, you still got pampers, things. Things are the prices are going up and jobs are not going up in terms of what we be making. I mean, no, if you're just, worrying about diapers cool. and baby stuff, I mean, it's 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 free booby milk and you know a little. I was gonna call it a plastic diaper. I was trying to make <laughs> <laughs> a little cloth diapers all day. I mean, wow! Yeah. I, is this how all y'all feel about children nowadays? I, I don't know. I can't speak about anybody else. I know friends who are like dying to have kids. Yeah. Oh, I know okay. friends who are like, I can't. Is that trying to, to take the population the out? I feel like I'm trying to find myself the right girl so we can. Have, have my kids, blah, 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 blah. I'm a y'all niggas are insane. Y'all niggas are trash. Y'all not even gonna be good parents. One blame, period. <laughs> You're not gonna be good parents. They be terrible parents. They can't take care of themselves. I'm gonna take care of a kid. God damn. It's, legit, it's just being, it's sometimes just being honest. Sometimes this being helps honest. you get yourself together. And sometimes. And these niggas, they will not work. No, no, no. <laughs> you know what? I've said Listen, this. It's not gonna work. The kids do not help you get a job. 
Okay. No. And they do not you help with your work ethic. You they can't stand up to your mama. How you gonna stand up to having your own child? Nope. Your mama tell you you can't do this. You say yeah. All right, you're right, mama. No. All right, ma. Okay, so then you're not ready to have Because she must be paying your bills if you're still listening to her. Oh, hello. That, oh, yeah, 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 mothers only really talk because you... You're in their pocket. Yeah, you're in their pocket. To why, as they would say, motherfucker, I'm still taking care of you. How are you going to bring somebody, another mouth to feed? Yeah. You no, can't you take care of your damn that. self. No, not have been here. No. So, and that goes back with growth. Mm-hmm. Growth, you have to understand, where are you? Yeah. Look at where you are. Yeah. You may be, and the other problem with women is they have a tendency to look at everybody around them. Oh, she's getting married. Oh, she's having a kid. Or, Why can't I? I, wanna be, I don't want to be lost in the mm-hmm. mix, in the sauce. Mm-hmm. Well, your situation is different from her situation. You don't know. She may have got caught and said, oh, you might as well have a baby. Let's go ahead and get married before the baby's here. We know those situations. Gunshot weddings. You're going to get married. You ain't going to have my, my baby out here looking all trifling. No, nah, you're not. So get the, the gun, gun, daddy. Get the gun. Get the gun, daddy. <laughs> Say I do, I'm, I'm, Say I do. I'm there for it, baby. Y'all yeah. not going to keep making all these single mothers out here. <laughs> see, y'all going to blame it on social services. See? Because y'all daddies put away them damn shotguns. See, there you yeah. go. So now you have to say to yourself, like, okay, I may want, to, I may feel like I need to get married and have a kid, but realistically, I'm not ready. And I need to say, Put down the back burner, get myself ready, and hopefully I can find someone down the road to that I can mesh up with and maybe we can get together we're on the same wavelength and we can maybe do that. Right. But I can't look at, make my decisions based on what I see in society, what I see on IG, what I see uh, in, in YouTube, or, or what my friends are doing. I don't get because their friends get married and have a kid. That's their responsibility. I, there ain't no money coming in my pocket to take care of the kid. Mm-hmm. But you can't look at everybody and say, oh, they got to be happy. I need that because that's going to make me happy. How can you be happy when you don't know who the fuck you are? Yeah. First, before you start bringing somebody else in and you start growing. Again, stop looking at things you think is going to make you happy and grow within yourself and find out what will make you happy before you start bringing other people to your fuckery. Because that's the A lot thing. of y'all go ahead and fuck around and have kids and y'all really not ready for that shit. It's a like, lot. Y'all can't even do basic things like put yourself aside for someone else. Mm-hmm. Right? Like to be in a relationship, just a very bare minimum of saying, you know what? Even though I don't want to do this, my spouse needs me needs this from me. The least I can do is give it. Y'all can't mm-hmm. even do that basic shit. Mm-hmm. Now mm-hmm. what happens when the kid's sitting here crying who can't give you no indication as why it's crying? Mm-hmm. It could cry because it wants you next to it. It could cry because it bumped his toe on the corner of the bed. It could cry because it shit itself, cry because it pissed itself, cry because it's hungry, cry because it just felt like crying today. You don't know. Yeah, that's true. But you got to figure it out. You got to figure it out on the fly. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say, oh, my clock dictates that I need to have a kid before it gets, before pregnancy gets even more complicated. But if you're not mentally ready, you're going to end up just being another piece of trash ass parent, probably the same piece of trash parent that raised you that you thought I could oh. do better than them. But you can't because just like them, you never figured yourself out. But you're going to rush and have kids and then take 10 years to figure it the fuck out. Yeah. And meanwhile, that's 10 years of fucking up a child that then is going to eventually have to do the same thing that you didn't do. And ideally, if it does do it right, you'll end the cycle. But it probably won't. We'll probably end up doing something else to eventually have a kid as well that's fucked up because they never got over the shit that you did that was wrong and you were their parent because you never got over what your parent did that was wrong generational trauma yeah that's what it boils down to i guess and we and that goes back to why we have to do the work to make ourselves better Mm -hmm. that's why it's it's not it's not a a pill it's not it's not a shot you really have to do the work what pretty much what he's talking about and grooming yourself and and doing that work you're you're truly as a woman will become attractive yes and you will attract the 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 mate that's absolutely in the pursuit of you you know healing and working and you know just kind of blooming and coming into not just yourself but your aware self so to speak, because so many of us are, you know, just into self. Mm-hmm. You're only worrying about yourself. No, no. Let's become a little bit more aware. Start blooming. Like mm-hmm. it's springtime. Yep. Start blooming like the flowers. Yeah. Start finding yourself 
because then guys will really see who you are. Not not the bloom is tight, yeah. but the one that has this blossom. You like that's a be- and uh, and most people wouldn't even want to pick that flower. It's such yeah. a beautiful flower, you don't want to pick it. But if it's a bloom, you're like, oh, you know, I, t- I take it and put it somewhere. Maybe mm-hmm. it'll bloom and be better, and it may bloom and not be nothing, or it may not bloom at all. Yep. But at least if you put yourself in a situation where you know you're self-confident, you know where you're going, you're mm-hmm. confident where you're heading, then you won't have to worry about just hoping, oh, Lord, I hope somebody just come and pick me because my time is running out. I got to hurry and get picked yeah. up. Nobody want that. Nobody want desperate men, when, women or men. Nobody yeah. want desperate either or. But for women, it's more important because basically you want to make sure you're making the right decision the first time. You don't want to kind of yeah. say, you know, I'm going to wing it and maybe hopefully pray upon a star, wish upon Buddha mm-hmm. and all them, that this is the choice. You want to make sure, here's how I'm confident, I'm carrying myself that way, and the dude's got to be confident. He going to come to that type of woman half-ass. He know he got to come correct. He going to hit with no bullshit-ass game or what he trying to do. She got He got to come correct. And you'll be surprised at how many guys you'll weed out by just being confident in yourself. Oh, yes. Well, that's the other thing is that when you're – coming into your self-awareness that we you know are talking about those men who they know they can't approach you they now. know they can't like off the jump like they might you look beautiful today ma and keep on walking that's because they know they can't even begin to entertain what you got going on nope and you go from a situation where you felt desperate to where it's like oh no i really am kind of wanted out here no, it's Absolutely. a lot of eyes on me. What's what's happening? Absolutely. It's and, sort of the idea where the men are about to get married and they have their glow up because now they're kind of putting that foundation down and they're mm-hmm. they're very confident in themselves and where they're going and they're like, Why everybody want me now? And you're exuding confidence. Yes. Like you never exuded it before. You're very the same thing in, in, we notice it as when you date people. Like mm-hmm. like even with dating as a whole. Guys notice that. Like, oh, oh, when you're dating a good girl, you're in a good, serious yeah. relationship, and now it, it, everybody sudden, now, wants like, you. It seems like everybody wants yeah. you. It's like, Cause now yeah, because now you have some poise and you have some yeah. confidence. And you yeah. actually look like the man mm-hmm. because you're, you're carrying yourself different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, when you fall out of a relationship, like, well, these people were interested when I was in a relationship or not because now you're desperate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, I don't, I don't want to be this type of person, but I'm going to just go here. It's not the same. Being, coming into self-awareness mm-hmm. is not the same as dating yourself. No. Okay. No. Now, no. I'm all for, no. I'm no. all for, you know, <laughs> stopping past Olive Garden and sitting down at the bar and having myself something to eat because, you know, I've been out all day. I don't have to eat to go. You know, I'm okay with eating by myself. Yeah. But this whole, like, dating yourself, how long are you doing that for? That's not <laughs> self-awareness, number no. one. Like, that's not figuring out no. nothing going on with yourself. That's no. not a glow up. That's you spending your time on yourself. Yeah, and you probably you probably spending that time because you at your wits end. You're like, I've tried everything. Yeah. I don't know what else to do but sit here I by mean, myself. I mean, and this is it's, it's a trend going on on TikTok, and I'm not against uh, you know like you going out and saying you know what a bunch of girls don't want to go, but I don't want to miss this experience. Mm-hmm. True that, but if all of your experiences are you dating yourself, mm. and this is all year long. Mm. And this is like for the next two or three years that you just dating yourself. Wow. No, no. There's a problem with you in, in re- regular relationships in general. Like mm-hmm. you don't have a coworker to go hang out with because you don't, probably don't want to deal with that person. Absolutely. You probably yes. don't want to deal with the men also that you've been interacting. Like that's a, the reason. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, yeah, we, we have to stop pretending that this self-dating thing is self aware It's not. But I think self dating is cool. It's cool. I think I think the thing is, cool. is that like you gotta say self date yourself in new locations. You gotta do that. You gotta self date yourself in new locations. <laughs> like if you always go to Olive Garden on Thursday <laughs> or Thursday. You can't go self dating yourself at Olive Garden on Thursday and be like, damn, well me and myself had a great day in the Olive Garden. Well how about you and yourself take a trip somewhere new? If we go to Buffalo Wild Wings today. Yeah, no, you, know you I mean? no, like, that, go that's... put yourself in a different environment and see and maybe maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I need to be somewhere else. Maybe they hang around a different group of people. But are you going out to like find new people? Because I'll be like on the Olive Garden be to find new to. people. You should be wanting to go find new but people. But I don't I don't see I don't get it. I don't get it one minute. You at the Buffalo Wild Wing shop pick up on people by yourself? How do you 
This is a bizarre concept to me. We literally just sitting here talking about people who want to be dating themselves for three years. That's all these fucking bizarre concepts. I'm saying. trying to say, can we propose a separate, slightly less bizarre concept of how do I go outside and find some new people? So you say go out and then do it. Do or go it. to events. Go to go to a concert. Go to something you enjoy. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. go. I cannot tell you how many friends I made recently by just going to things I enjoy. Mm-hmm. Looking at the person to the, the right or left of me and saying, hello, nice to meet you. Why are you here? Okay, do you right, t- but that's being a guy. I understand that's different. No, that's, that's fine. Different. But like, as a woman, you can meet other women who might have, might grow, might no, move differently. I, I know, like, if I go out, I can. You can definitely meet the perfect stranger, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But I'm a social person, and I go out by myself, and I go out with other people also. Mm-hmm. And I just think it should be a really like healthy balance of that. And if yeah. you find yourself to where you're only, in my personal opinion, you're only out by yourself all the time. Like yeah. what? Like you don't even hang out with your parent, with your mom. Mm. You don't even want to go pick up your mom. She get on your nerve too. Let me guess. Oh boy. Everybody in your life get on your nerve. So we go find new people. <laughs> like. You're gonna have to. Or you need to readjust yourself. But again, what did we you start this whole podcast yourself. was? You're so comfortable being where you are. You don't want to take that route to be uncomfortable. Because that means, damn it, I got to be more uncomfortable than I am right now. Other people don't want to be around you. I wouldn't either if I see who you (laughs) are. And I'm like, I want to be around you. Like, what? And you don't realize. You think that I don't want to be around other people. No. (laughs) Other people are avoiding you because your attitude sucks. Or because you do too much. Or you don't do enough. Mm. Yes. And that's the truth. Yeah. But but you're so into your own bubble, you don't even see that. Can't. Because, again, that means that I have to look at me and say, God damn it, I need to get fixed up. I need to do something to change this. I got to I gotta move different. What's I got to do work. I got to bite my tongue. God forbid. But wait, what else is going to happen to you? If you, you, can't don't do say it, it, you can't say whatever you want to say out of your mouth in front of your mother. Oop. Yeah, no, it's actually okay for you to go out to lunch with your mom, have a good time, and bite your tongue. Yeah. And not say whatever you want to say, about, especially when you know your mother don't roll like that. And then you'll be surprised if you do that, how things will start to shift. Mm-hmm. Just that little bit. Just yeah. being uncomfortable and not being, keeping it real, keeping yeah. it 100. Yeah, that's yeah. my favorite. You know, yeah. oh, man. Black women, don't we love it? We got to keep it real. Got to keep it 100. Yeah. But then you keep <laughs> you it real. You got to keep it real with your mother. <laughs> Why? Like, it's no. your mama. It's like, no, have some reservations. It's your mo- Now, if you can't bite your tongue for your mother, I don't know. How you biting your tongue for your man? Oh, he just got here. You just go off the deep end, too. Which then you ain't going to have a man soon. That's well, that's probably why you don't have a man. Because you don't know how to, sh- Lord forgive me, for that rest of that sentence. No, nah, fuck it. You don't know how to shut the I'll fuck up. Nah, y'all just want him to go ahead. He been doing it all, all day. <laughs> I'm he sorry. I don't know what I forgot. He's I guess I was shooting live rounds today. Yeah. Yes. My gun is loaded yes. today. Yes. My gun is loaded but, today. But, is that not the reality? It's the fucking reality. And there's a lot of women out here. A lot of them. Beautiful women, mm-hmm. and they're wondering, God damn it, I'm fucking gorgeous. Why nobody want me? Yeah, because you know that 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 woman talk, that that cackling, that loud talking, that unfiltered. That's girlfriend talk, and that's fine. Yep, it is. But generally speaking. That man don't want that same energy that you give into your girlfriends or your cousins no. or your sisters, right? God, no, no, <laughs> he don't, he don't. I think that we got to that, to a whole idea of keeping it real. And if I'm not the same way in front of you as I'm the same way in front of my mama and being the same way in front of my grandmother, then I'm just not keeping it real. But that's a bizarre concept. Mm -hmm. Because why would I conduct myself the same way in front of my employer as I would conduct myself in front of my husband? No. Can I conduct myself the same way in front of my mama as I would with my sister? No. No. You have to act accordingly. So if the men are calling for change and they're saying, listen, 
power to the women, girl power, anything you can do, I can do better type of thing. They are here for us. They love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yes. You you know, you all big, loud talking and you can roll your neck and, you know, talk real big. They love to see it. Absolutely. But from afar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> from yes. afar. Exactly. You, you out back you drinking tea with your girlfriends, out cackling, doing the most. There you yeah, go. Yeah, babe, enjoy yourself. But don't bring that same energy to you to the head of your household. Please don't. Or your potential head. In there order to get what we want from life, you start. If you get it, you continue doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. If you don't get what you want, you have to eventually change. You have to. You if got you to. said, I'm going to change the way I dress. I'm going to switch up my makeup. I'm going to change up my hair. Hell, I might even go in and change up my weight. Buy me some new sneakers, new new nails, new toenails, new you know fingernails, all that. Eyebrows went and got me a new nail tech. Eyebrows on fleek. <laughs> I changed everything. Mm-hmm. One thing I didn't change, my attitude. Ooh. Couldn't buy that part. No. Couldn't go to Nordstrom's, pick that up. Couldn't get it out the beauty shop. Nope. So when it's like when it's time for change, it's internal. Yes. <laughs> it's got to yes. be internal in order for it to actually be something substantial and to get that change from it. And that's what's always funny to me, that, that second part you just said. Uh, you have to make the change for yourself first. People end up in a relationship and then, like, let's say something happens where, like, okay, we had key having miscommunications. We got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say like, oh, I'm tired of my my significant other playing games constantly. Or, or, I'm tired of him going to the bar. I'm tired of him uh, working late, right? And he says like, oh, and I'm tired of getting cussed out. What you'll say is, oh, once you do this thing, then I'll do my thing. So I was like, just do your thing first. Like if you want to, if you're tired of like, you know what? If what he needs from me to be home. Is to stop nagging. I want to stop nagging. Why? Because I can control my own actions. Mm -hmm. And then if he doesn't do what he says he's going to do, then I know that he's not willing to put in the effort for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, as a guy. Yeah. You got to do the same thing. Like, say, I'm going to make my own adjustment. Yeah. And if she's still going to nag me. Yeah, what you waiting on her for? Then I got to go. Yeah. Because I made the adjustment. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying I'm putting in that good faith effort. When you your change is contingent mm-hmm. upon someone else changing, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. You're yeah, not gonna want to change bullshit. anyway. Yeah, nope. because they can choose when they, when the hell they ever. Yeah, whenever they like you stuff. you doing what you want to do, regardless of yep. how I move. Exactly. Exactly. Like it has the way you move has nothing to do with the way I move. No, it doesn't. Yeah. And and, and that's you know, kind of like in a nutshell, what we've been talking about. It's like. Change and growth is difficult. Yeah, absolutely. It's uncomfortable. Um, it's going to hurt. But in the end, you put the effort into it, and you put all you in all that you are into making that change mm-hmm. and, and making that growth. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised where you end up at. Yep. Because potential is only as good as you can f- fulfill it. Or you just be a person. Damn, they had a potential to be great. Mm-hmm. But you can saw this a whole lot of things that they didn't do, and they just ended up being ah oh, lost potential. Yep, because I guarantee my ladies, on the journey to adjust your attitude, your feelings gonna get hurt. Absolutely, it's just who we are as women, mm-hmm. and how our feelings hurt and get and are affected. Absolutely, absolutely. So if we're not self checking. Mm-hmm. And somebody else has to give us that check. Mm. It might hurt your feelings a little bit. That doesn't mean that man disrespected you. That doesn't nope. mean he did anything, you know, against you. You nope. know, it means that you missed your own check and he had to deliver it. And Absolutely. hopefully y'all will become stronger from it. Absolutely. And, you know, and for the men, you have to change. Mm-hmm. The thing is. As I always say, you, your parents raised you the best they could, even as fucked up as they were. They did the best they could. Right. Now it's time for you to grow up and say, I want to be the man that I choose to be, not who someone tells me I need to be. You need to be the man you got to be in order to take care of your family, take care of yourself, and take care of your community. But by taking care of you and your family, 
you take care of your community because you become a role model. Absolutely. So, you know, make the changes, y'all. Work on it. Work Start. on the changes, and it's not going to happen overnight. I trust us. We we know it ain't going to happen overnight. Or in the beauty shop or at the mall. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just not. No, and it's not a pill. There's no shot. Mm-hmm. There's no no pie in the sky. None of that shit's going to happen. You have to actually sit down. Do the work. Or first of all, figure out who the, where you are and then do the work. Mm-hmm. And then continue to do the work. It's going to be hard. Some days you're going to be crying. Some days you're going to be upset. It doesn't matter. Keep taking that step forward and you'll eventually reach where you're trying to get to. So, you know, with that, we're going to leave you with this episode of uh, On the Mic with M. And T. Listen, people. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell so you can see every time we put out a new podcast and uh again work on yourselves every day you know and as we always say be better do better with that peace and blessings